This is an example about Sweden. Uh, maybe actually I'll, I'll start it again and, and I'll have some sound. But actually the sound is very difficult to hear, but I just want to give you the idea. So these kids are building computer games and they're sharing them with friends in other countries, Portugal, Sweden, uh, I can't remember the third country, in East, uh, Slovakia I think it was. Um, and by the way, this is when sharing games across the web was really quite new and difficult and so on. But it doesn't matter about the innovation of the technology. I'm going to switch the sound on so that our Swedish colleagues can listen to Swedish. <laughs> oh. This is Bill Barron. But he's still built them with friends in another country. What makes a computer game work? Someone has to program it. Say, get the computer to change a scene in an adventure game. Or program a score to change when the board hits a paddle. Kids in the playground project had decided all these things for themselves. They are playing with rules. Oh, she disappeared. What's he doing now? In the proxy. And how do you expect that? No, that's killing us. Okay, so it's, it's, I'm not giving a talk about this project. I just want to share with you um, a few points. First of all, all programmer scored. First of all, I can't make my computer work. Um, all programmer scored to change when the board hits a paddle. So, I'll use this example as a, as a good one. So, this is a very, about, about the simplest video game you could make. I mean, it's not exactly thrilling, especially now in 2010. In 1998, it was quite fun. By the way, another interesting thing. We were worried that the kids would think that this is really too simple. But when you look at, even now, the phone games are hardly harder than that. You know, Tetris is, is much more complex, but it's still, you know, fitting things into little... It, that, nobody's playing three-dimensional video games on their mobile phones yet, although that will be soon what the situation is. So now, here, these little kids, they built a simple game. You, you could write this game uh, in your favorite programming language. Uh, move the paddles up and down, move this paddle left and right. When the ball hits the paddle, reflect off the paddle. Although when you're seven years old, trying to formalize what reflect means is not so obvious, actually. How do you do that? Well, we have a special programming language that I'm not going to bore you with. We've designed a language especially for young kids that didn't have written language in it. So it was a very big and time-consuming project. But I want to share with you what the kids said. Now it's getting to the theme of creativity. And I'd like you to listen as carefully as you can, please, to what the kids say, and then we'll, I'll try and wrap up this little section and see, see where we are. So you've seen the game, and the kids, we thought it would be nice. We didn't talk to the kids much about it. We came back after a week, and we had this most amazing um, surprise. Which is, it turns out that the kids in the class that we were working with had done almost nothing that week except talk about this game and how they were going to change it. Remember, the heading of this little piece of my of the workshop is culture, changing culture. So we were really surprised and obviously very excited about this. Here's a little discussion between us and the children. Oh. Sorry. Well, we wouldn't mind doing about three balls. Three balls. We wanted to do that, but we didn't have enough time. Three balls with three different scores? Yes. One with five, one with one, and one with ten. So you have three balls and you have five, one, and ten. And you like that? Well, actually, <laughs> 5, 10, 15. The balls get bigger as well. No. 